Okay, we'll uh, try to solve a problem today. You can uh, go through the question. <coughs> you don't need to take the question down. I'll uh, share this with you later. It is a problem from the textbook of Andrea Goldsmith. Consider an OFDM system with uh, total bandwidth B equal to 1 megahertz, assuming beta equal to epsilon equal to 0. <coughs> so the total system bandwidth is 1 megahertz. And the parameters roll off factor and uh, uh, time factor due to time windowing. Both uh, beta and epsilon, they are uh, zeros. So let me just draw it. <coughs> so you have OFDM, you have subcarriers like that. And this is a frequency axis. The total bandwidth, total system bandwidth is 1 megahertz. So you are not uh, considering beta and epsilon to make it uh, more convenient to do the calculations. A single carrier system <coughs> would have simple time of one microsecond. Remember that is also our uh, sampling time. <coughs> it is also our sampling time. So at uh, B is equal to B bandwidth equal to 1 megahertz and you can find the sampling uh, time or the symbol time from it ts is equal to 1 divided by b which is 1 microsecond <coughs> the channel has a maximum delay spread of 5 microsecond so tm which is a delay spread of the channel is 5 microsecond and from the delay spread, uh, you can find the coherence bandwidth. Coherence bandwidth is 1 divided by Tm, which you can get uh, 1 divided by 5 microsecond. And that is 200 kilohertz. <coughs> 200 kilohertz. So with uh, uh, T is equal to 1 microsecond and uh, Tm equal to 5 microseconds. So you can see that. Ts is less than Tm, uh, you would clearly have a severe ISI in the symbol interference. Assume an OFDM system with MQAM modulation, <coughs> okay, M, M, Q, A, M, where uh, M denotes the uh, number of symbols in the constellation, number of symbols in the constellation or simply number of symbols in your modulation scheme <coughs> to keep the overall uh, overhead small uh, OFDM system uses n equal to 128 subcarriers to mitigate ISI so you have n is equal to 128 so you have 128 subcarriers here. So if I start from this center frequency is F0, this would be F1, it would go up to F127. So you have from 0 to 127, you have 128 subcarriers. All right. Uh, so Tn. Uh, Tn is equal to n into Ts. That is an equation which we established before. Tn is equal to n into Ts. And that will give you uh, 128 into Ts is 1 microsecond. That gives you 128 microseconds. Uh, the length of cyclic prefix. So what should be the length of cyclic prefix? The length of cyclic prefix, if the channel is having a length of mu plus 1, the length of cyclic prefix 
cyclic prefix of this if the channel is having a length of mu plus 1 cyclic prefix should have a length of mu okay so here the value of uh, uh, the, uh, the length of the channel is going to be uh, since uh, your uh, sampling time is 1 microsecond <coughs> and your delay spread is 5 microseconds so the length of length of channel uh, the delay spread divided by the sampling time ts which is uh, 5 microsecond divided by 1 microsecond which is equal to 5 so 5 is the length of the channel this is a discrete length of the channel uh, so you must <coughs> have a length of cyclic prefix the length of cyclic prefix should be greater than greater than uh, this length of the channel greater than uh, uh, it should be greater than mu greater than or equal to mu and uh, you have selected uh, the length of cyclic prefix <coughs> so the condition is cyclic prefix should be greater than or equal to uh, mu which is 5 and so we are selecting the length of cyclic prefix as 8 in the question uh, we are selecting it as 8 uh, so that <coughs> uh, this condition is satisfied uh, this is greater than or equal, greater than greater than tm divided by ts <coughs> okay uh, so this ensures no ISI, zero ISI between OFDM symbols. For these parameters, uh, find the subchannel bandwidth, the total transmission time associated with each OFDM symbol, and the overhead of cyclic prefix and the data rate of the system, assuming m is equal to 16. So you are asked to find uh, the subchannel bandwidth. <coughs> what is the bandwidth of a subchannel? So well, that is simple. You are dividing the whole bandwidth into 128 subcarriers. So the subchannel bandwidth would be subchannel bandwidth denoted by uh, denoted by B n. <coughs> it's going to be the total bandwidth divided by n. So it is 1 megahertz divided by 128. Or another way of uh, obtaining it is uh, if, you, if you have found a TN, TN is the time duration of uh, one subchannel. So the inverse of that will give you the subchannel bandwidth. So 1 divided by TN, which is <coughs> 1 divided by 128 microseconds. So both these are going to give you the same answer. Uh, that is, you can work it out. Uh, 7.812 kilohertz okay 7.812 kilohertz so uh, bn uh, you can see that this uh, subchannel bandwidth uh, bn is much less than the uh, coherence bandwidth coherence bandwidth was found as 200 kilohertz and your subchannel bandwidth is much less <coughs> bn is uh, 7.812 kilohertz <laughs> okay so your uh, coherence bandwidth is much less uh, much greater than your subchannel bandwidth and uh, so you have a negligible isi because of that each of the subchannel will undergo flat fading the total transmission time for each ofdm symbol is going to be tn plus mu into ts right so uh, the symbol will have uh, what will be the symbol period Symbol will suppose uh, I'm drawing the time domain. We are working on the time. You have to find the symbol time. What is going to be this? Oh, what's going to be the symbol time? So this is your uh, OFDM symbol, and you are adding cyclic prefix. Okay. Uh, the total symbol time uh, is going to be uh, n into uh, ts, which is equal to uh, tn. And we have uh, got it as we have got Tn as 128 microsecond. Along with that, you will have the uh, cyclic 
prefix also <coughs> and the cyclic prefix is having a length of 8 and uh, the sampling time is 1 microsecond so you have 8 microseconds here. So the total symbol time of an OFDM uh, signal is going to be uh, 128 plus 8 is going to be 136 microseconds. 136 microseconds is going to be the uh, symbol time of, uh, of the whole OFDM signal along with cyclic prefix. All right. <coughs> Uh, so the overhead associated with cyclic prefix. Uh, what is what do you mean by overhead? Uh, what are the num? What is an amount of uh, time dedicated for cyclic prefix, or the number of symbols dedicated for cyclic prefix? What is uh, other than the data you are transmitting the cyclic prefix, and what is the overhead associated with it? The overhead associated with the cyclic prefix is going to be eight microseconds. The transmission of cyclic prefix divided by divided by 128 divided by the 128 microseconds that is the overhead associated with cyclic prefix this is the extra data that you are transmitting uh, for uh, to avoid inter symbol interference and to uh, convert the linear channel to circular channel etc etc <coughs> so this is the extra overhead uh, uh, so how much is the percentage of uh, data that is transmitted for cyclic prefix that is 8 microsecond divided by 128 microsecond that will give you the answer 6.25 percent your overhead is 6.25 percent and uh, it is said that the system transmit uh, 4 bits per subcarrier which means m is equal to 16 the data rate of system m is equal to 16. Uh, it means that your constellation has uh, 16 different symbol points <coughs> and uh, you have 16 uh, symbols here so how many bits are required to specify one symbol you need at least four bits per symbol you need at least four bits to specify one symbol. Zero, zero, zero. These symbols they range from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, from uh, 0 to 15. So you have 16 symbols. The system transmits uh, four bits per subcarrier every t seconds. So every capital T. So every uh, 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 so t seconds correspond to uh, the total transmission time. So every 136 microseconds, every 136 microseconds, you have uh, uh, you have <coughs> the data rate. Data rate is going to be uh, the data rate is going to be. Uh, you have four bits, and you have how many symbols? You have 128 symbols. Okay, you have four bits and you have 128 symbols and this transmission happens in 136 microseconds so that is going to be your data rate so you have 128 symbols for each symbol four bit each uh, so you have uh, uh, and this happens in this time 136 microseconds so you have the value of data rate as 3.76 mbps all right so we are that's about the <coughs> problem i hope you understood the problem uh, very simple problem of ofdm transmission takes care of uh, uh, all the main parameters which we have studied before <coughs> and now uh, i would like to share one of the uh, programs uh, that i have written and we'll uh, see a small simulation we'll try to understand more about this uh, uh, OFDM transmission the discrete transmission of OFDM for that I uh, shift to MATLAB open a file that I have made this is the file uh, 
okay so uh, this is an uh, simple ofdm program uh, it has got uh, uh, this demonstrates uh, ofdm transmission and uh, reception uh, regarding OFDM transmission, uh, you have uh, I have given <coughs> uh, symbols to generate from uh, zero to three. Uh, so it generates uh, rand i uh, rand i function generates uh, values from zero to three. Uh, rand i function generates values from zero to three, and I have uh, asked to generate eight different values. Uh, here uh, the capital uh, letter alphabets uh, they denote the frequency domain variables and the small letter alphabets will denote the uh, time domain variables and you can see uh, x uh, the value of x is uh, in the command window okay side by side Okay. the value of x uh, there are eight symbols which are generated here uh, and this has to be uh, I have asked to generate from uh, numbers from 0 to 3 uh, so I am using QPSK here and x1 is a uh, variable that you, which has uh, the QPSK modulated symbols and the value of m is Four, capital M is 4 so you have x1 <coughs> uh, which uh, th these eight symbols are modulated now uh, they are modulated using QPSK modulation you can see the eight symbols are modulated using QPSK modulation and then uh, an uh, IFFT is taken okay and something happened to the resolution Never mind. An IFFT is taken. And this uh, IFFT is uh, stored to this variable x2. Let me show you what x2 is. So x2 has again 8 values. Uh, I have taken an 8 point IFFT. Uh, then the insertion of cyclic prefix happened. The channel that I have taken is, uh, is, a, is a Rayleigh channel and this Rayleigh channel has got uh, four points. I have taken a four point Rayleigh channel. Uh, it is uh, not complex in nature. It is a simple Rayleigh channel <coughs> and it has got four points. That is H. H is having uh, four different points. That is a Rayleigh channel. Uh, when you are doing program, you should actually normalize this channel. I haven't done that right now. Uh, so uh, I'm using a four point channel so the value of mu is four uh, sorry value of mu plus one is four uh, length of the channel uh, in the textbook we denoted it as mu plus one mu plus one is four where I have to reserve mu number of uh, points for cyclic prefix uh, so <coughs> if the, ch uh, the length of the channel is four uh, so I take uh, three num three points from the end, so it is an eight point sequence. After IFFT, you get an eight point sequence. The last three points, that is six, seven, and eight, up to six to eight, I've taken it and placed in the uh, front as cyclic prefix, along with this signal x two, and uh, then uh, defining the channel and uh, this signal uh, x three which is having the cyclic prefix along with the OFDM signal, it undergoes a convolution, a linear convolution with uh, the channel impulse response H. And uh, after, so R, R is the uh, variable that you get after convolution. R is the signal that you get at the receiver. So R, so you have R here. And you can see R is having 14, 14 numbers. Yeah, R is of length 14 uh, because the result of convolution is uh, if you have two sequences one having a length of M other having a length of N then the uh, 
resulting sequence after convolution will have a length of m plus n minus 1. So with that you can see uh, the length of this sequence is uh, 14 uh, because uh, this x3 is having a length of 8 plus 3, 11 and uh, channel is having a length of 4. So 11 plus 4 is 15 minus 1, uh, 14. Yeah, 14. And uh, the first three, uh, first mu number of symbols, here the value of mu is 3. First mu symbols, they are in ISI, so I have been considered those symbols. So I have taken from 4 onwards. <coughs> and uh, from 4, I need to consider uh, till 11. So I need to remove the last three symbols also, because they are also in inter-symbol interference. So from 4 I need 8 points, so I have taken 8 points here, which is uh, R1. And this R1 I have taken F of T of it, and that is stored in R2. So since I have taken F of T, uh, this time domain gets converted to frequency domain, and you have R2 here. And uh, I have taken a frequency domain of the channel also, I uh, will make that in capital letters h1 okay uh, and uh, you have r1 r1 having eight points where i have neglected the first mu values three values and the last three values then i perform an f of t converting the signal to frequency domain and you get r2 so I've taken an 8 point f of t, you have 8 points as the output. And uh, I've taken an f of t of the channel as well. I have taken an 8 point f of t of the channel. Okay, so you have 8 values there. <coughs> and I'm using zero force in detection, which means simply inverting the frequency coefficients of the channel. So I've uh, done everything in a single shot because uh, what I have made is I have made uh, the frequency coefficients as a matrix, as a diagonal matrix and I have taken, I have inverted this matrix multiplied with uh, R2, R2 which is the signal after F of T. So both are in frequency domain. So uh, it is just like how we studied Y of K is equal to X of K divided by uh, H of K uh, and you have uh, R4 which is a signal that you get after demodulation, uh, QPSK demodulation. And you can see uh, the value <coughs> values here, values of X and R4. Uh, X is the value which was originally given to the system, given to the transmitter after modulation, after IFFT, after the addition of cyclic prefix, and then a convolution, uh, removing the cyclic prefix, uh, taking f of t and uh, performing zero force in detection and finally after PSK demodulation, QPSK demodulation, you get the symbols exactly as you have transmitted. So the transmitted and the, the received symbols, they are one and the same. <coughs> All right. So this uh, is a program that demonstrates this uh, OFDM transmission and reception of signals. Uh, you can go through it and if there are any doubts you can ask me.